Hey, Baseball Town, I'm Reading Fight and Phil's radio voice, Mike Ventola, and we're real excited to have the 2018 King of Baseball Town, Eric Valen. And Eric, first and foremost, congratulations on this awesome honor, and what does it mean to you? It's awesome. Uh, I was talking to Andy earlier about how, you know, if you would have told me 18 years ago that I'd be King of Baseball Town from when I first came here as a player, I'd, I'd say you're crazy. But, yeah, it's just awesome. Great honor to be involved with such a great chair Baseball Town Charities, King of Baseball Town, and join the uh, past recipients. I was about to say, you've been very involved uh, within Baseball Town Charities. You've been an outstanding uh, contributor, and not only just within Baseball Town Charities, but here in Berks County as well. And do you think this honor kind of wraps everything full circle for you? Yeah, you know, I have two young boys, so I've been actively involved in uh, youth baseball, so it's exciting to be, uh, to, you know, just to be a part of it. And now, you know, with the Dream League coming up, too, i um, hopefully be able to do some things with that. So it's just a great organization, and like I say, just humble to be a part of it. Now, um, you know, for you, uh, you've been a part of this uh, Reading family uh, for such a long time, uh, getting an opportunity to play within the Philadelphia Phillies organization. You were a member of the 2000 uh, Reading Phillies team, and, uh, you know, just to be considered a Philly, uh, what does that mean to you? Yeah, it was, you know, coming up for the minor leagues with the Phillies, that's who drafted me. So a lot of times you talk to any player, a lot of their kind of best memories are who they came up with through the minor leagues. Because once you get to the big leagues, it is kind of more of a business, and, uh, you have families then, you have wives, you have children. So when you're coming up to the minor leagues at the A-ball level, double-A level, a lot of times it's almost like college just without going to class. So a lot of great memories coming up with the Phillies organization, a lot of friendships, that guys that I still text to this day. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, looking back on it, I just can't believe it. It's just, you know, 18 years ago when I played here in 2000. So I'm 40 now, so I'm like half, it's half my life so ago. So... Um, a lot of great memories. It's just exciting. I was very fortunate to play here because it is a great place to play. Now we're going to take a trip uh, down memory, memory lane here a little bit. And uh, for you, uh, when you got drafted, um, you had a chance to uh, get drafted before you went to college. Mm -hmm. um, you ended up deciding to go to UCLA where you ended up having an outstanding uh, career where Pac-10 player of the year and got a chance to play against, uh, play with some really uh, well-known uh, uh, big league ball players. And for you, when you think back to your career at UCLA, how beneficial was that for you in going into the minor leagues and eventually the major leagues? Yeah, at the time in high school, I wasn't quite ready to probably go and start my pro career. Um, and school was important to me. So I, I, I had a kind of my choice to where I wanted to go to school. So it was kind of between USC, UCLA, and Stanford, end up picking UCLA. But coming out of high school that year, uh, I probably, I told a lot of teams, I said, hey, look, here was a certain dollar amount I'd sign for. If you, would, if you, if you couldn't get to that, I was going to school. So I was up front with them a lot because um, I did have some great options of where to go to school. Uh, and I wasn't kind of, I wasn't more that, I was probably more about a fourth round pick out of high school. Mm -hmm. um, and that wasn't going to get it done in my eyes. So I got drafted by the Tigers late. They kind of watched me over the summer. But even then, I knew I was going to end up at UCLA. So went and went to UCLA, had great experience, a lot of great friendships. Uh, we made the College World Series in 1997, um, accomplished a lot of things that I hoped to accomplish by going to college, and then became a a supplemental first round pick out of there in 98 and uh, started my career with the Phillies. So it ended up being a great um, decision for myself and, and, and looking back, you know, just, just great times. Now, and uh, with your uh, career at UCLA, um, one of uh, the most distinguished uh, moments uh, during your time with the Reading Phillies uh, was actually with one of your teammates. Um, and a guy that you ended up uh, growing up with a little bit in some sense in Pete Zamora, uh, you know, many Reading Phillies fans and, uh, you know, people always talk about the Pete Zamora uh, perfect game uh, sure. back in 2000, and you ended up making an outstanding sliding catch. What do you think back to that game, and especially with you coming up with Pete, um, was that considered one of your more memorable moments as a player? Yeah, I still I still can see see myself making that catch that in yeah. that game that night. Um, yeah, I know I knew Pete back back in high school. We'd play summer ball together, um, and then we played at UCLA for two years. He was a year older than me before he started his career with the Dodgers at the time, and then he got. I think he either got traded to us or somehow we picked him up as a free agent. I'm not sure. But, yeah, I remember that game. And then to make that catch, yeah, it was, you know, just a great feeling just to, to help him out because that's something that, I mean, perfect game, wow, at any level, it's, 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 it's amazing. So to, to, to know that he has that and I, was, I helped him get that, but I mean, it's pretty, pretty special. And, you know, that 2000 series for, you know, that Reading Phillies team, um, it was uh, significant in a way because, you know, the Harrisburg uh, Senators were uh, perennial champions. They had won four Eastern League championships. They were in pursuit for their fifth. And then uh, you get a chance to play them in the playoffs. And then one of your teammates in Carmine Capuccio ends up hitting a, a walk-off grand slam in game one. And you were 
pivotal in that moment because you got a chance to walk with one out in the inning to get the rally started and uh, to kind of knock out the Senators at that time. I remember watching a video and seeing Gary Varsho and everybody so excited. Uh, was that moment just uh, kind of up there, one of your all-time yeah, favorites? Yeah, it was. I think I was on third when Carmine hit that yeah. grand slam. And I remember when he hit, I remember like getting ready to cross home and looking back at Gary and Varsho, and he kind of like takes the bat. He's like, he couldn't believe it. He like takes the bat and like flicks it like 30 feet in the air. So <laughs> that was awesome. You know, watching Carmine run around the bases. Um, then we went on to you know to beat them and then go to play New Haven in the championship. Unfortunately, we lost, but. You know, great. That was just a great, fun team. Great characters on that team. Um, probably the most fun I had as a as a professional player at that at you know at the time. So, like I said, because you are still young, we were living about five guys in the house, and then also having a having a come in here and having a great a great team in, in, here in Reading it was, was awesome. Eric Valen joining us here, and you know, Eric, um, you know that team that year, eighty five and fifty seven, you win the Southern Division. But for you as an individual, you had a really outstanding year. Uh, Twenty two home runs, ninety RBI. Uh, your home run total was third in the Eastern League, and uh, you know, ended up being an All Star uh, that year. And I know you've said that was probably your most uh, enjoyable year as as a ball player. But from an individual standpoint, do you feel like that year kind of put you on the map as a player? Yeah, you know, I was coming off of Clearwater where I had a good year. I think I'd made the All-Star team in 99 as well. And then when you get to AA, you, you start to feel you're really close to the major league. So I did have some success that year in 2000. Um, and then that next that offseason, I was put on the 40-man roster, then went to my first big league camp in 2001. So, um, yeah, I think once you start to have some success at AA, you realize that the big leagues is kind of right around the corner. And now, uh, you know, you mentioned about that team too. You've had um, that was that team was outstanding in its own right. Uh, a couple of those guys you got to eventually go into the Hall of Fame with, with Gary Burnham, and of course Nick Punto, and then Brandon Duckworth, uh, obviously with you know his uh, big league career, and you know with all those guys and how many of guys like you and the rest of your teammates they got a chance to go up to the big leagues. Um, you know, from time to time, how much do you keep in touch? with all those guys from that team. Yeah, so I'll text um, you know, Nick Punta every now and then and Gary Burnham, he lives up in Connecticut, so I'll run across him here and there in the summer at maybe different, different events because he was helping out um, a, scout, a local scout up there for, for a different organization. But I'll see Jason Michaels every now and then down in Florida, Brandon Duckworth, a scout with the Yankees. So you realize it is kind of like a small, a small fraternity, so, and, it, and it's with the technologies these days, it's very easy to keep in contact with somebody. And uh, you know, with you getting a chance to go into the Baseball Town Hall of Fame in 2016, a uh, very pivotal moment for you and for those teammates and Gary and Nick and of course with Pat Burrow and Jason Michaels um, and then of course uh, with Steve Degler, a uh, longtime radio announcer here and prior to that event, um, Ruth Hartman getting a chance to get inducted earlier that year. Uh, to go in with that class though, was that uh, ever, could you ever, ever imagine yourself not only getting in but even getting with some of the guys you got a chance to play with? Yeah, yeah, that was awesome because yeah, we all kind of came in that same draft class with uh, Jason Michaels, Punto, Pat, and uh, Jason and Nick and I, we all kind of went up the ladders together through the minor leagues with the A-ball, double-A, and triple-A. So, um, and Gary also played, played with him in, in here at Redding and in Clearwater, so that was great. That was a great evening. Um, honored to you know to go into the baseball baseball Redding baseball Hall of Fame as well. Um, but yeah, it's amazing how time flies. It's crazy. <laughs> no, absolutely. And uh, you know, um, obviously, with being a minor league ball player, you're you know you're doing everything in your power to get up to the big leagues. And for you, you had um, a neat debut in a sense because you got a chance to debut with the Phillies in one of the more historic ballparks in, in the land in Fenway Park against the Boston Red Sox. And uh, I know uh, Randy Wolf uh, had a good day on the mound, but it was, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the Red Sox ended up winning. But for you, you got your first big league heat, hit up at Fenway Park and to uh, get up there and, and to uh, make your debut, uh, what was that experience like? How did you get that call up to the big leagues? Yeah, so I got the call, it was in Scranton. Um, Goose Gregson was our pitching coach at the time. And I remember he had the he had the cell phone of the coaches that year in the, in the dugout, so he kind of came up over to me. I was getting ready to take my position for defense, and he said, hold on for a minute, and then uh, kind of let me know right there. So it was kind of exciting, got a few congratulations in the dugout, and then uh, kind of celebrated after the game in the clubhouse with a bunch of guys. And I drove up to Philly that next day, and we were playing the Mets. I didn't get in the game, and then we went, went ahead to Boston and, and made my debut that in that first game against Boston, David Cohn was a starter. I think I was 0 for 3 off him. Pretty wide strike zone then. I wish there was a, the K zone there is today. But and then uh, I ended up getting about a 15 hopper off Derek Lowe for my first okay. hit. So big old heavy sinker. It was nice to get that first one out of the way. 
Um, my wife, you know, my Jen, who wasn't my wife then, but she was there. My uh, my family, my brother, uh, my grandmother. So it was a good, you know just a fun time. All the hard work that you know you finally get to the big leagues and uh, and get a hit. It meant, it meant a lot. No, and you know for you getting a chance to play for the Phillies a couple of seasons. I know you were in Cincinnati, but. Uh, um, but like you mentioned earlier, baseball is a business, and uh, you ended up uh, going to one of uh, the Phillies' biggest rivals in the New York Mets, and uh, ended up becoming the uh, eighth player in Mets history to hit for the cycle. And though for your time in New York, uh, getting an opportunity to uh, play for a different team and organization, what was that experience like? Yeah, um, like I said, when you get to the big leagues, it is kind of just a survival of the fittest. Uh, you're going up there. You know, guys are married. Guys have families. It, it becomes. It, it, it truly is a business, and you have to you have to remember why you're playing. That you're playing because you love the game and it's fun and everything, but it, it's it it could be a tough game. I mean, it's you're you're playing against the best of the best, so it's not always easy. So, um, but yeah, the Mets was a great time. I had a a really good year in 2004 with them, um, and then started the next years in 2005. Ended up getting sent down about in towards the end of May in 2005, and that was kind of the end of my uh, major major league career. For, um, end up going from 2001 to 2005 but um, yeah I mean I think your biggest allegiance is always probably to that first team who, who you play with especially all those experiences in the minor leagues kind of just driving towards the big leagues I think that's something that every player can relate to and then when you get to the major leagues you are friend you, 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 you do develop friendships with everybody but I don't think it's not the same as when you're still grinding grinding your way to get there before you haven't got to got reached the major leagues so uh, yeah, um, like I said, parts of nine years, a lot of time coming up with the Phillies and some big league time with the Reds and Mets, but um, yeah, wish I played a little, I wish I was a little better hitter and had a longer career, but hey, it is what it is. I was about to say, you still, you got, you got the opportunity to go to the big leagues yeah. and, uh, you know, because as you know, uh, especially uh, with your position uh, with the Phillies and understanding for how hard it is to get up there, uh, still an outstanding uh, job, but then for you, um, once your playing career was done, um, you ended up uh, becoming a coach uh, for one season with Williamsport, and then you ended up going to scouting. What was the appeal for you to go into the scouting department? Yeah, so I wanted to scout from, from the get-go, but there wasn't a uh, scouting opportunity available on the amateur side. And, you know, at that time I had, um, I was 2008, so my son was, one of my sons was four and one was one years old. So we weren't going to move. I mean, we had a lot of friends here, a lot of support. Um, so I called Steve Norita, and so he offered me a coaching position the first year, and then and then what happened was Gene Shaw, who had the Northeast area, he became a scouting uh, regional cross-checker. So I slid right in his position and did the area up here in the Northeast for four years before I got into um, supervising regionally for the last five. And now I'll be working with the Miami Marlins this year as a national cross-checker. So scouting was just a better fit for us as a family because I could travel and they don't have to really about worry about going anywhere. It just it fit for us fit for us better. Uh, and you know for you again the opportunity to scout and work and uh, trying to help the organization out and getting good players but for you uh, a teacher in a sense as well. You've run camps here at First Energy Stadium and uh, and that's been a big part of what you have done here in this community as you and I have got a chance to talk about earlier. And When you had those camps here um, was that just kind of all f full circle for you getting a chance to teach young kids about this uh, great game of baseball? Yeah that was something Scott and I talked about because Five years ago at the time, my oldest was, he was only, let's see, about eight years old, and, and Scott's were even a little bit younger than that. So we wanted to do something, just expose kids to uh, baseball in, in a fun atmosphere, and what what better place to, you know, to do it than here. We've got a lot of great um, options to be able to run a camp here in Reading. So we kind of just started to introduce them at basic baseball instruction with some fun to, fun along to go with it, whether it's in the playland, whether it's in the pool, the little games during the instruction. So end up being a great uh, it's been a great event for the last five years uh, you know sports has to be fun for the kids you want them to keep signing up because eventually they're, they're they do stop playing whether it's when they're young or whether they're in high school college professionally whatever if they're lucky enough to to go on that far but you want it to be fun because whenever it is whenever whenever it is done you'd like them to kind of continue being around the game whether it's watching it going to games and then you know if they have a family exposing the game to their children as well all right, Eric, one final question before I let you go. It's really been a treat getting a chance to talk with you uh, here today. And, um, you know, you mentioned about your kids. Are they looking to follow in Dad's footsteps, maybe? Are they, you know, getting a chance to uh, play the game and uh, learn from the best? Yeah, we take it one year at a time. <laughs> I know it's baseball is such a tough game, and you have to be so skilled, and you have to have so much drive and passion for it. But I always, could, I always tell them no, no different than when I'm running my camps. 
Guys, make sure it's fun. When your first sign is not fun for you, you better please tell Daddy because I don't want you to keep keep playing because it is it's it's such a tough game and uh, take it year by year for them. But yeah, they're enjoying it right now. I love watching them play and. Uh, We'll see how long it goes for them. Absolutely. Well, Eric, well, thanks so much for stopping by. Congratulations on being the 2018 King of Baseball Town, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, Mike. All right, that's Eric Valen. I'm Mike Ventola. Thanks for watching.